Okay, great. Let's let's pray and then we'll get started. Yeah. Father, we thank you, Lord, for this day. We thank you that you've called us, Lord, um, to be in fellowship with you, Lord. Father, we thank you that, uh, Lord, you choose to reveal your heart to us. And, Lord, we, we get to, Lord, come and, uh, Lord, just be ourselves in your presence, Father God. Unburden ourselves, Lord. Open our hearts, Lord, to you. And, uh, Lord, pour out our hearts to you, Father God. We thank you for this awesome privilege that you've given us, Lord. Lord, we are so glad that uh, you are our Abba Father, Lord, who watches over us, who cares for us, Lord. And uh, Master, we, we just want to worship you this morning. Yes, Lord, we come and we bless your name, Father God. We thank you that you know us inside out, Father God. We thank you that you, Lord, uh, know all our needs. And uh, Lord, you care for us, Lord. And Father God, we thank you that, uh, Lord, we have confidence in your presence because of the shed blood of Jesus Christ. And Master, we thank you for the, Lord, for the blood uh, covering, Lord with which you washed us, with which you've justified us, Father God, and uh, Lord, make, made us, O oh, Father God, um, come and access, Lord, your very presence, Father God. We thank you, Father God, and to this we are truly grateful, and uh, Lord, today's, uh, today, the whole of this day, we commit into your mighty hands, God. We thank you. We give you all the praise. We give you all the glory at this time. In Jesus' matchless name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, so... Um, let me just um okay. okay so um as we go through today's class um so last class we looked at goals goal setting and how we need to you know set goals and so on um so today's class uh, we'll look at uh, this whole aspect of communication right um and uh, this whole thing of why it is a skill right communication uh, why it's a skill um see all of us are born with the ability to communicate right um when we say communicate it means that uh, to send out information right we to to share your thoughts to express our thoughts desires whatever is there in our hearts you know, we are we have been we have been designed like as social creatures as uh, as people um, who are made in the image of god we are created to communicate and right? created designed to communicate right so um, that is there inherent in each of us right right from you see infants um, and to you know to all the way you know, we, uh, as people grow up also we are we are created to communicate right um, and yes there could be you know people who communicate a lot there could be people who don't you know communicate much but but overall you know we've been created to communicate right and if you look at it uh, this communication is a very important uh, skill Right. This is a very important. Um, it it is a skill first of all, which means that um, one can learn. If one is not communicating well, one can learn that. One can develop that skill. Right. So it's a it's a skill that um, all of us um, need in our lives. Right. So so for some people it comes naturally, like all other skills. Right. We temper because you, we are created with that kind of a temperament. So or maybe natural ability we can you know communicate effectively communicate well but uh, for some of us maybe you know we just need to develop in this area but this is a very important area for us to identify and develop right so um, so let's look at uh, what communication is and then let's just go through you know why it is important okay so basically when we say communicate at a very uh, fundamental level simple level it, it means to send information to receive information right so to send information whatever is there in your heart whatever is there um, you're you're sending that information out uh, to a receiver right so you're a sender there is a receiver and you're sending that information out and uh, also you know it's the other way around you would be a recipient or a receiver of communicate of information that the sender is sending Right. So, so it's both ways. So, in other words, it's speaking, it's also listening. 
So when we say effective communication or this person communicates well, it means it doesn't mean that it's the person just speaking and likes to hear the sound of their voice over and over again. And no, it means that the person is also listening, right? And also uh, uh, there is a shared understanding. So this is very important, right? The, the objective of communication. There's a shared understanding of what is being said and what is being heard. So which means that it is made common, right? So both the sender and the recipient, uh, for them, this information is made common, meaning that um, you said something, you've spoken something. Now the other person also has the understanding or the shared understanding of what has what was actually spoken. So that's important. Right? It's not just you know I just transmit something, I say something, and uh, well. Uh, it, it's up to the other person to pick it up. No, it's not that. So effort is made to uh, speak in a way or communicate in a way that the other person can actually receive and do something about it. Right. So we see that um, you know if if you if you look into the Word of God, we see that you know, our God is a God who communicates. Right. He's a speaking God. Right. Um, he, he's 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 the one who who speaks, he's the one who communicates, um, he's the one who's even com commissioned us in order to go and communicate you know, what, communicate what, communicate the gospel, right? So we see that in the, in the commissioning, uh, in the Great Commission, we see that the Lord Jesus commissioning the disciples, each one of us, to go and preach. To preach is to speak forth, to proclaim, to declare, right? So to communicate the gospel to proclaim the gospel to every creature so um so we see that aspect of communication right in that so it's a it's a necessary thing we see god communicating to us in a way that we can understand right so yeah so when we go back to uh, the basics of communication right um so if if i'm the sender if i'm sending the information uh, so effective communication means that there is clarity in what I'm communicating, in what I'm saying, what I'm speaking, and uh, there is also make ensuring that the one who is the recipient or the receiver of communication, um, making sure that they receive it in the way I which I communicate. Right, the information is received in the same manner, uh, which means that they understand it, perceive it in the same manner in which the communication is or the message is transmitted. Okay, so making sure that all any effort is made or all eff efforts are made to make sure that they are so which means you know you ask questions or you make sure that you know you give them an opportunity to clarify uh, that what they heard is is um, in line with what you know what was spoken and so on right so it's a so when we say communication it's an active process okay so uh, it is both ways it is active it is not passive Okay, so what is the difference? You know, passive is if it happens, it happens. Like there is no effort there. Uh, there is no effort made to um, to share the information. There is no effort made to receive the information. Right? It's like I'm just going to be there, and if it happens, it happens. Right? So that is so for effective communication, one has to be. You know, it is it is an active process. Right, which means both the speaker and the listener, you know, you have to be actively engaged in it. Okay, so this uh, effective communication is an important uh, life skill. Right, um, it's a, it's an important life skill because all of us, you know, we are not only are we designed to communicate, but all of us uh, are placed in life situations, whether it is. Uh, professionally whether it's to something to do with uh, ministry whether it's a family setting um, whatever it is you know whatever environment that we can think of we are in that setting and there is a necessity to communicate right so we communicate verbally we communicate you know we text we send through email we communicate even non verbally right even as we are texting, you know, with emojis and so on, and uh, if we are speaking non-verbally with our gestures, with our voice, the tone of our voice, the loudness or softness of our voice, so 
uh, you know, non-verb or the posture, body language. There is also the non-verbal aspect of communication. So, um, so it it involves all this, and um, and therefore, you know, it is uh, in whatever setting we might be placed in or we might get into. Right, there is a need. Uh, if it is ministry, and if you're, uh, you know, if you're, let's say you're leading a ministry or you're part of a ministry. Um, maybe God has called you to plant a church or start something new or whatever it is. You know, you see that there is this particular need. There are other people that you work with, and when you work with other people, there are some certain things that you need to, you know, share instructions, um, vision, right, uh, uh, and guiding whatever principles and maybe sometimes correction, right. So all this for all this. It has to be shared in the right manner. It has to be shared so that it is understood, right, and uh, and so on. So when it comes to you know, we learned in how biblical preaching, there are certain things that hinder, right, that come that block us from sharing it effectively, and so we need to circumvent this. You know, we need to learn how to uh, do it well, right. So, right. So the importance. Uh, different scenarios, you know. If it's uh, if it's your profession, yeah, you need to have good. Uh, one needs to have good communication skills, right? So we are talking to people, maybe to clients, maybe to um, you know others who are um, you know in the organization. So things like good eye contact, the words that we use, right, um, and also uh, making sure that the language. And language meaning that the vocabulary and the words that we use, and so on, is suited for the audience. You know, these are things; these are skills, right? So, so you, uh, you know, when you explain something to a five-year-old, you, know, you use a certain kind of language, you avoid certain words, and uh, you use, you know, certain words, and you express it in a way that the child understands. Right? The same thing if you're talking to a Let's say a twenty-five year old or a thirty-five year old, the language and the words that you use will be different, right? So, so that's the thing, right? Um, it's not only just speaking, but also writing, right? When it comes to our profession and maybe in ministry, you know, there's a lot of communication that happens, right? Um, right, written communication. You know, you're writing letters, you're sending emails. Uh, maybe within the church, maybe outside the church to others. Uh, maybe it's an invitation that goes out to invite people for your for a special meeting or gathering. So there is a communication, right? That happens, and it could be for different kinds of people, like maybe professionals, maybe young people, maybe uh, married people, whatever. So different sets of audience, and there is this communication that keeps going out. So, um, so there is that writing aspect of it so it, it's a good skill to have right um okay so even in our personal lives right personal life um communication miscommunication leads to um or you know miscommunication and also breakdown of communication leads to a change in relationship you know the relationship gets affected when there is no communication or when there is miscommunication, right? Um, so, so that's the you know that's the danger of uh, or the negative side of it. Right? If if you're not communicating well, if we communicate in anger, or if you communicate because of impatience, right? Um, so this is it, right? Or if you think if you assume that other person knows something, and you you know, you say something, and it's understood differently, right? So um, there is always this miscommunication. So in in a relationship, even in personal life, you know, whether it's, whether it's family or friends, um, there is a need for good communication, right? Um, managing interaction with businesses, so in a professional way, in a, in a, in, a, in terms of ministry as well. So yeah, so which means that this skill can be developed. Okay. So this skill can be developed. So I just want to, you know, ask us this uh, honest question. So, so how many of us, you know, uh, when we share, when we say something, 
um, the response is that, OK, I understood clearly, right? Or how many times in our conversation or in our, maybe we say something, we write something, people ask for clarity, saying, I didn't understand. Okay, what does that mean? Right? So we need to honestly evaluate right, uh, and see how you know, do I need to up, upgrade my communication skill, right? Um, sometimes we can weary people, you know, make people tired with our with our words, right? That's also we over communicate, right? We say a lot of things instead of saying it in a simple manner. We you know we just speak overload the person with information. So that is also you know. Uh, a thing um, that we need to watch out for. And the skill is in uh, making sure that you communicate in a concise manner, right? So so we need to do you know, both. And uh, so it, it would actually help if we honestly evaluate our uh, communication, whether it's written, whether it's spoken, uh, even, even sometimes our nonverbal you know, communication um, to see that, OK, does it all? Does it line up, right? Um, does is it effective? Is it making sense, right? So, uh, let's look at um, you know when it comes to inter interpersonal. We're saying interpersonal because it's you know one on one or one to a group, one to many. So interpersonal communication skills. So we can divide it into verbal, nonverbal, and also listening. Okay, so verbal. So um, verbal means we speak something. OK, um, and uh, also, um, see, there is also the writing part of it, um, which also makes a big uh, difference. So it's uh, something that is written. It is something that is spoken. OK, so um, yeah, so maybe um, let's say you want to talk about end times, OK, to, uh, let's say, uh, some a, a child who is uh, maybe eight years old, nine years old, okay, eight to ten, maybe, um, yeah, about end times, okay. So about the second coming of the Lord, okay. So how would you how would you share that? You know, any volunteers? Would you like to take a chance? Let's say you have someone who is listening. And it's a eight-year-old, you know, child, and you just want to share that person about end times. Okay, any volunteers? It doesn't doesn't have to be a like a long drawn thing, but would anyone like to try? Okay, let me call out some names. Okay, Sri Radha is unmuted, so I don't know who is going to speak. Okay, Pastor, Hans is Pastor. Yeah, Francis, go ahead. Uh, Pastor, like I, no, I'm not going to explain. Like I have question. Like is in a like a street or individual? How is that, Pastor? Ah, it's for an individual. You know, one one child who's eight year old. Eight. Okay, so, yeah, eight year old. Okay. Eight year old and. Um, Okay, let's say you know you you want to talk about end times. Okay, okay. second coming end times. So yeah, so how will you talk to the child? Uh, you 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 yeah you you talk as if you're talking to that child, right? Can be just one or two points about end times. Yeah. Pastor, give a candy or anything. Sorry, what? Candy or anything. <laughs> okay. Uh, then uh. I'll talk in a very cute way, like okay, <laughs> like okay. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, there is a friend for you. He'll come back. He'll take you. So you should do good things and all. Something like that we can talk. Mm. Say so, go ahead. Yeah, just talk to us as if you are talking to that child in a uh. cute way. <laughs> go ahead. Did he went <laughs> to school? Okay, so like, um, how many friends you have in school? Uh, then the child will reply like four friends, something like that. Okay, then okay, there is a new friend is coming to you. 
Mm. Then the curiosity will be there, might be. Uh, then okay. Okay, then I'll tell like okay, the friend to make you fly on air. You can fly, you can go up there of the sky. Mm. Then the curiosity will be increased. Mm. Then I will introduce uh, his friend, the friend name is Jesus. You need to talk to the Jesus, but you can't see him now. Mm. You yeah, he's coming on the way. <laughs> he will take you. He'll make you fly and all. Right. Nice. So you'll, you'll talk about flying. You'll talk about a friend. So these are things, uh, and you know, it makes sense to an eight-year-old. Okay. So let's say the same information that you want to talk, you know, you want to share with a like a twenty-five-year-old person. You, know, you you realize that. Yeah, thanks, Francis. So you realize that you will not use the same vocabulary. You know, it's just common sense, right? You will you will change your vocabulary uh, to suit that age, to suit the you know the whatever background they're coming from. So, so these are shifts that we make. Um, you know, we make it consciously, right? And one needs to be aware of this, like when we are speaking, right? So, let's say in a professional setting, we can't be too informal, right? In a in a business like setting, in a professional setting, we can't be too informal and um, like we can't say hi guys, how are you, right? Uh, because one thing is that you've just probably met them, and they were just introduced. So there is a sense of formality. There is a sense of let's say a decorum that is maintained uh, in in that kind of a professional setting. So that's so these are things, right? So these are things that um, uh, are what we what we would call as you know this, this is an awareness that we need to have uh, when we communicate right so and this is something um, uh, that really helps us to address the audience in the right manner and I think uh, you know all of us since we've called to share call to preach call to proclaim the gospel we need to have this right and also we might be in you know different settings whether it's business or professional um, you know kind of office kind of setting or ministry you will deal with you know different kinds of people, and uh, so therefore we need to have this awareness and understanding. You know, who is it that I'm speaking to? Okay, so um, so that, that's the thing. You know, like we we communicate in a simple manner. Actually, the talking to children, by the way, uh, you know, if you're teaching children, that uh, it's a very um, a very good way to really improve our communication because um, when we want to when we if you're going to prepare to talk to a child, you will use very simple language. At the same time, in your own mind, you know there is a lot of clarity. Like you need to come to a clarity of what you want to share, because you might like share it in just one line or two sentences, and th those sentences need to make sense, right? So we share it in a very clear manner very concise manner so it's a great exercise you know if you take some complex topics and uh, you know and you think about it okay how can i teach this to a child how can i teach this to a 10 year old how can i teach this to you know uh, so it's a great exercise and uh, where we will avoid jargon jargon you know some of these words um, big words we'll avoid it and then we'll uh, it's it's good when we get total clarity about that particular subject right so it's a, it's a good exercise right and also yes you know when it comes to um, you know addressing a different set of audience we use words we use words which actually pack in a lot of information right when we uh, so that you don't have to go on and explain it right uh, we use certain words like when you say you know uh, when you for example when you use a word like uh, uh, how shall I put it? Uh, use a word like, um, um, yeah. Uh, suddenly, my mind is blank. Okay, when you use a word like, let's say, you know, in a, a scientific term like photosynthesis, right? It means that uh, a plant is actually making food um, with the use of sunlight and so on. You know, like the plant is making um, is manufacturing you know, um, food based on you know. Uh, 
whatever sunlight and so so you don't have to go on and explain uh you know for that right kind of audience you don't have to explain in many ways okay a plant makes food and that this is how it makes it you know, photosynthesis would actually explain it right because they also understand it so that is also you know so certain words we use because which has a lot of meaning so we don't let me let's say when we use words like justification right yes to learn it we understand okay what it means but then when we use it to an audience which already knows right the meaning of it you don't have to explain too much you don't have to say a paragraph but you just use that word and that is enough that suffices right so verbal communication okay um what is non verbal communication so it means not usage of words but it could be gestures right all of us you know if we had our cameras on and uh, if we were asked to speak we will have certain gestures uh, or in person um i i remember we did one exercise and i think it was in one of the camps where um you know a person was supposed to you know not use their hands right they were supposed to sit crossed uh, uh, you know like this and uh, they were supposed to not move their heads right they're supposed to speak introduce themselves to talk about something um without moving their you know and changing their facial expression they should not smile they should not use their eye eyebrows not use their hands so most people found it very difficult 99% of them found it very difficult to speak without you know any kind of uh, those gestures right so um so these also communicate something like the non verbal uh, uh non verbally you know our posture uh, we say okay we, when we when we slump we know that okay maybe we are tired maybe we are disinterested and uh, when some people avoid our eyes we know that okay they are maybe <clears throat> avoid looking at our face we know that okay they are maybe uh, not comfortable they are hiding something right all those things right so um the, so non verbal uh, communication and especially you know things like um, even the physical distance right people stay far away and they say something um and they're hesitating to come close to us and talk that also communicates that okay they are either fearful not comfortable right? see all these things they actually tell us something okay so are we aware okay. like a person says you know i'm fine you know i'm fine uh, or you know with a lot of enthusiasm i'm how are you i'm fine so you know okay the voice the words i am fine and then their gesture and facial expression everything connects yeah so they are fine but sometimes what happens is they say they are fine you know how are you i am fine you know so you know that okay something is not right they saying they are fine the words yeah makes the, it it's it says you know the words mean that they are fine but when you see their gesture they are actually not fine when you listen to the tone of their voice you know it's tired and uh, it's not very sure it's not joyful so you know that okay something is not right right um so that they are communicating something through their non verbal um, whatever body language right okay so non verbal communication right what does it how does it help right when we speak when we say something non verbal things right uh, gestures it helps to reinforce what we say uh, with words right so we're saying from the point of a sender it helps to reinforce right for example if you're saying something and uh, and you're using those gestures you know saying you're just you know using your hands and saying this is it this is what we need to do it right today we need to get it done at this time we need to be there so you're using those gestures to say that hey i really mean it we really need to do this right um at the same time when people are let's say as a person who's you know who's, who's receiving uh, this uh, information right and you're saying something and you need to do it and the person is saying you know nodding their heads you know, yes yes we need to do it right so which means that that person is in agreement right uh, complete agreement so it's a non verbal gesture 
right? So it reinforces that. So, um, so you can, if you're a recipient, if you're a receiving uh, on the receiving, um, you know, you're a recipient of a communication. When you nod your head, when you do that, the other person receives receives information that yes, what I'm saying, this person is in agreement. What I'm saying is making sense to this person, right? Um, so things like that. It reinforces, but it also modifies what is said. You know, when when the gestures uh, not in line with what is spoken. Right. Um, so somebody, so somebody says, "Okay, guys, this afternoon we are going out. We are, we are going out. We need to go walk some distance, and we need to go." Is everybody okay with that? And maybe some people are like, you know, they're saying, "Yeah, we are okay. Yeah, okay. Whatever you, say, whatever you know, then you know that, um, you know, whatever they're saying, and that that particular gesture, it suggests that they are hesitating." Okay, it also can conveys information about the emotional state, right? So um, when we when we see uh, body language, we see that uh, it uh, it talks about the relationship between people. So as an observer, you can understand. Okay, you know maybe this person is just you know slapping the person's back and saying, hey, you know there's this, uh, there's a lot of uh, like goodwill. Right. You see that yes, they are probably you know on good terms. They're doing well. Uh, at the same time, if the person is very hesitant, they're not looking at each other. They're not smiling at each other, etc. You see that okay, they're discussing something serious, right? So, and also it it talks about okay whether they are uh, if something is not right or something is not good uh, between the, the two of them. Then you can actually make, uh, you know, you can understand by the gesture, by the body language itself, right? So nonverbal communication provides feedback to the other person. Okay, now this is another important aspect. So you are actually communicating, you are actually sharing something, you're giving feedback, whether you approve something, you're whether you are in agreement with it, whether you disagree with it. You know, the you may not say the words, but um, the movement. The body language, what you the, these gestures actually, you know, um, suggest something. Okay, let's say, um, you know, you say something, and I'm like, um, and I'm just doing that. Mm. So what does that mean? I'm just I'm, maybe I've got my hand on the table, and I'm just running my fingers. I'm just listening. You know, you're you're sharing your heart. You're saying, okay, this is a testimony that I'd like to share. You know, God is something, and I, all the while I'm just doing that. So, what does it? What what feedback am I giving you? Anyone? What do you What do you understand from that? Let's say you know you you're saying, okay, uh, I just want to share something that God did. Quite recently, just yesterday, and uh, this is what and and you you know and you begin to speak. You know, you're saying, okay, this is what God did, and you're just completely engrossed in it. But um, and just you know, I'm just doing this, and uh, you know, I'm I'm not really looking at you. I'm looking from side to side. Um, so, what does that convey to you? If I do that, and um, anyone? Does it convey anything at all? If so, what what does it convey? Anyone? I can't hear anybody. Uh, thinking of something, something else. Or, or not interested, right? So you're distracted. Your mind is not on what this person is sharing, right? Um, and also, it, yeah, it could mean that this person is disinterested. And also, the fact that um, this person is impatient, right? You're like, okay, just hurry, move forward, just move on to next. You know, I want to, I want to listen. I want to hear what what comes in the end. Like this person, person is impatient. Right, so, so your <clears throat> less confidence 
Um, not necessarily less confidence, um, less confident. But actually, this is, it's, it's communicating that person is uh, not listening fully. The mind is elsewhere. And also, maybe person is in a hurry, right? And it's in, the person is impatient, right? So what happens is sometimes we are able to read this cue, like nonverbal cue. Right, and therefore, we are able to make changes. Like we are able to shift things, um, even as we speak to that person. Uh, maybe we can ask a question. Hey, uh, are you in a hurry? Maybe we should, you know, can we speak some other time? Right, instead of just you know going on and on, you can you can check. You know, we can talk about this some other time. Let's say it's an important you know thing that you're sharing, and you're seeing this nonverbal cue. You're getting this. So you can actually say, you know, we can we can talk about it some other time, you know, when you're are you in a hurry or something, we can so <clears throat> you can you can change things there, right? You don't have to because may, maybe what you're sharing is very important and that person is not taking it. Or you could say things like, you know, hey, uh, I just want you to focus here because we are talking we're, I'm just giving you some very important uh, instructions so you, you know maybe the person is looking at the phone and uh, you know we want to finish something and uh, because this is important so we will talk about it you know when you are ready right so asking that also helps right so so for us we need to understand <clears throat> and pick up these uh, non verbal cues so that means that we are positioning ourselves to communicate better, right? even to receive things, uh, receive information, and to uh, share information in a better way. Right? Let's say you're talking to a group of students or a group of uh, you know um, uh, uh, adults, and uh, you're seeing some you know some shifting, some um, you know people uh, are impatient, and so. Yeah, so instead of going on, and because maybe what you're sharing, what you're instructing is important, instead of carrying on in that same manner, you can actually pause and make changes, right? Shift. So that's uh, that's what an effective communicator will do, right? Um, so any questions? Anything at all? Okay. Um, so also regulate the flow of communication, you know, which means that, OK, uh, should I pause? Maybe uh, should I stop here? Right? Maybe the person is doesn't seem to be in agreement with what I'm saying. So maybe should I explain things a little more? Right? You see that you're saying something, you know, and you're saying things like, um, um, you know, one needs to wake up early in the morning. In order to pray, right? You need to wake up in the morning, like three o'clock or four o'clock, and that is the time to pray, you know. And then you look look at the person, and then um, they are not interested, or they seem like um, not in agreement. You know, you see it in their eyes. So what do you do? You know, do you just go on, and you just find out, right? Uh, so you know, you 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 don't seem very uh, sure of that, or you're not in agreement with that, you know. Then the person says, "No, I actually work on night shifts, and so you know, this is my. I, I won't be able to pray at that time, and uh, you know, that's when I, you know, I come in late and I'm sleeping during that time. So um, I, I don't think I can do that. And so you're able to, you know, clarify and saying, okay, this is your, you know, uh, I didn't mean that, but then it is your best waking moment, and the first waking moment you give, you know, when you're alert." And, and and so on, right? For example, so the thing is that <clears throat> to be aware uh, of what you're saying and um, speaking, and what the other person is, how the other person is responding. Okay, so let's look at some types of um, uh, nonverbal communication. Okay, it could be body movement, hand gestures, nodding, shaking of head. Um, we, we can easily, you know, uh, identify that posture also. You know, when we stand, uh, when we sit down, uh, you know, everything um, communicates something, right? Uh, eye contact, you know, when you're 
looking into somebody's face and you're you know you're saying something and you know that okay this person means it right they are quite serious about it and uh, but when constantly you're not looking into you're not making eye contact then that also means that okay the person is um, you know something is bothering them you know either they are not sure of what they're saying or you know the they something is making them uncomfortable right okay then um <clears throat> uh, another important aspect of uh, of communication is the volume which means the level of your voice and also the tone of your voice okay so by the volume of your voice or the softness of your voice and the tone of your voice you know hello everybody attention i want you to listen right so it communicates something right or you know if you're low you know everyone i'd like you to listen uh, i'm about to say something so that also communicates something else right um okay everybody now are we ready right your tone of your voice that communicates something else right so uh the the volume and the tone of our voice uh, helps us so if you want to <clears throat> say something which is of uh, let's say it's a, it's good news it's great news and you want to you know share that so do it and you know get get involved get engaged in it and share it in a manner that that communicates that it expresses that right? there's nothing wrong right so you express it joyfully and if it's if it's something which is a serious matter then you know you your voice and your tone and the volume of what you're saying volume is the loudness of it or the softness of it right um uh, that needs to change in in line with what you are saying what you are announcing right so you can try that right if you are addressing people uh, you can try that right you when you lower your voice yes you're talking about something serious um when you you're talking about something that's uh, that's important and that people need to take note uh, of and follow through right and when you again raising your voice also communicates that but then it's maybe it's more light hearted maybe you are you want people to you know uh, uh, you're getting their attention and so on so you change accordingly right okay um the space also like right? the space which you give you know now this is also a very cultural thing right uh, the the physical space between people when you're saying something yeah? and uh, it's also a cultural thing right like for example you know different cultures view you know space as uh, yeah, the space between people different cultures you know view it differently so um, like we might typically give a lot of distance as we talk to people and some some people might just come right you know right in front and then uh invade our space right so we are feeling a little uncomfortable about it so that also um helps uh, that also matters right in our communication to understand that okay um what else uh, facial expressions we saw that and also uh physiological changes right so sometimes we sweat sometimes we are, when we are you know when we are nervous or when we are excited uh we also blink our eyes more uh when we are uh, either distracted and uh, our heart rate goes up right when we are maybe even nervous or excited whatever right so all these things actually um you know uh, lend to the communication process right so when we look at communication we know that speaking is one part of it whether it's verbal non verbal right uh, but a big part of it is also listening okay so listening is important because listening is is when we also it is also part of communication where we said that it is not only speaking but also listening right what is the other person saying in response to what you've said right what is the other person sharing in response to what you've said right so uh, you are getting a very important message there so listening is very important um and for certain functions or certain uh, areas of ministry listening is key right probably you know in a pastoral uh 
function, you know, pastoral um, responsibility. Maybe as a counselor, um, you know, it it is even more important. Maybe someone is saying something, and you need to listen fully, right? So we're going to look at some uh, some aspects of listening. How can we do that? Right? So because effective listening uh, is also a skill, right? So um, come d d some distinctions. Listening is not the same as hearing. Okay, what's the difference? You know, if you can, if your ears are functioning well, and uh, you know, if there's nothing wrong, then you can hear, right? You can hear well. You know, somebody say, okay, can you hear? You know, can you hear? Yes, I can hear it. What is that? That means that okay, it is functioning well. My physical organ ear is functioning well. I'm able to hear something. But listening is to make sense of what we are hearing. Right? It means that you focus, you concentrate, and then you understand, right, with the intent of uh, making sure that you're hearing it right, you're listening to it, and you're taking in that information. So that's listening, right? Um, and definitely, you know, we. It, it's a, the studies say that it's an older uh, you know study, but then adults spend an average of seventy percent of their time engaged in some form of communication, and in that, forty-five percent is spent listening compared to thirty percent of speaking, and then there's reading and writing and so on, right? So, so listening is a big part of it, and listening is something that we uh, we need to um, get a hold of. Okay, so some of us may say, okay, I'm a good listener. Like yeah, understanding, focusing, yes. So some of us may say, you know, we are we are good listeners and and so on. But some of us may say, or yeah, I think the best people to say if you are if you're a good listener or not is the other person, right? The person to whom you're speaking, uh, who has heard you, and uh, you know that's the best person to really give us that feedback. Are we a good listener or not? Uh, there are times when you know, somebody is saying something and then you drifted off. You know, you're thinking about something, or you're thinking about how to answer that person. Um, you're thinking about how to solve that problem, how to fix that problem this person is sharing. So, after that first line, you know, they said, "Okay, I have this problem." You've you've totally drifted off. You're not listening to the rest of it, right? And that happens to, you know, all of us, most of us, uh, to the best of us, right? It happens. So, um, to learn that skill. Uh, to actually, it requires a lot of discipline in order to be able to listen uh, intently, right? Okay, we'll come back to this uh, later in our next class, and then we'll we'll you know wind up about um, interpersonal communication, right? So we'll stop here, and uh, thank you so much. God bless. Right. Yeah, thank you, Sri Radha and others. Happy Teachers Day. Thank you. God bless. Bye.